Hi, welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris, and this is Cold War Mercantile, and this channel is dedicated to uh, documenting the process that I'm going through in order to learn about how to import antiques from uh, Europe to the United States for resale. So uh, the idea is to get shipping containers, fill them with antiques, send them back, and take them to uh, antique shows around the country like Round Top or Brimfield or other premier uh, venues. So uh, part of that process is doing things on the European side as well as the American side. And for this video, uh, we're in the United States and uh, I'm doing some things, getting the building ready where we're gonna be receiving the containers. And I thought, uh, hey, I come from a small town in the Midwest and there are some cool antique shops around. And there just happens to be one that is an Amish owned antique store. And so I thought it'd be great to kind of go there, do a walk through and uh, take you guys along with me. So let's go. So here we are at uh, Yoder's Lamps in Arthur, Illinois. And this is, uh, I guess it would be a, an antique mall type of a place. Uh, it's highly curated, and uh, the owner is is an Amish guy, and uh, he does a really good job of making sure all the vendors have really top-notch curated stuff, and uh, they kind of stay in line with his vibe. I mean, all of this stuff looks like it kind of fits together, which is really cool. So, the one thing I wanted to mention is that uh, these are, I would say these prices are at least full retail if not higher so uh, that doesn't mean that you can't get a deal here I have on a number of occasions found a few things that um, I was able to flip for really good money there was a set of millinery hat forms uh, probably from you know the first part of the century of the 20th century and uh, I sold those for a great price I got the whole collection for like 45 bucks and they were selling for uh, well over $100 each, and there were several of them, so but that was pretty cool. Um, this is a really, uh, really top-notch antique store. Right? You can find really cool stuff. It's not the, I would say, man cave type items with lots of advertising and stuff, but you'll find a lot of items that uh, have kind of intrinsic quality with them. They're handcrafted. They, they come from a time when things were made to last. And uh, they've all been uh, really prepped and they're ready for show. So this is like the caliber of thing you would see at like Round Top or Brimfield where people bring their best stuff uh, to sell. So, um, yeah. Now this uh, advertising piece, I was really surprised and really uh, excited to find it because I hadn't thought about there was there was one of these in my life uh, it hung in my grandpa's barn uh, for my entire childhood and I hadn't thought about it for years and then for some reason on the way to this antique store I mentioned it to my brother and lo and behold once we got here there was that exact item hanging up on the wall what are the chances and uh, the price that they're asking is $135 and I didn't buy this because I, it uh, piqued my interest and I looked it up on eBay and it's possible to get it a little bit cheaper online, but uh, I was just talking about that after not having even thought about it for more than a decade. It's, it was really amazing to see. Here were some um, black bear skin mitts that were pretty cool. Uh, yeah, $195, which was pretty surprising. This side of the store has a lot of cast iron stuff, and uh, that's something that I do find over here in Europe a lot. And I've been hesitant uh, to buy it because back in the States, I know there are so many collectors and people who try to be the first through the gate to find the cast iron stuff. 
but uh, I'm not aware of whether they're doing all that based on certain, I mean, I've, I know that there are certain manufacturers of cast iron that are highly sought after and that certain manufacturers have certain price points on the market and I'm not sure how they would react to uh, stuff that was kind of not on the known list or the known quantity list that uh, dealers are looking for. Uh, that being said, some of the stuff over here is so unique. They're really interesting. I should do a video on that. Just cast iron stuff from over here in Poland that uh, will definitely raise an eyebrow because it's uh, they have unique one-off pieces that uh, you just wouldn't see in the States. Here's another thing that uh, reminds me of my grandpa. We used to have a couple of these old two-man gigantic uh, saws out in the garage and uh, not sure what actually happened to those, but uh, they're not around anymore. And uh, the price there, I think it said $55. Surprisingly, not very much. That saw has been cleaned up and uh, clear coated, it looks like, and it'd be pretty cool hanging up as a piece of decoration in a rustic setting. If you go to local auctions in the area, there are a lot of Amish folks that attend those and between them and other collectors and people who like to buy machinist tools, uh, they go pretty quick. And uh, so if you're the kind of person who's looking to source antique tools, this is kind of a good area for it. Uh, up north, we have a real industrial area of the country and uh, down here we were pretty rural and uh, you will find that kind of stuff everywhere around here. Here's an old fish trap for a hundred bucks. I don't know if you can see it from the video, but it's almost shoulder high to me and I'm six feet tall, so pretty, pretty tall. I know there are a lot of people who are really interested in glassware and collectibles and knickknacks. They don't quite have the appeal for me, so I don't tend to spend a lot of time on those. If you're interested in those, let me know in the comments. And in future videos, I can spend a little more time with them. This booth right here uh, is one that I like to regularly check out. Uh, I used to really deal a lot in old American workwear, including chore coats and denim jackets and uh, old bib overalls and those type of things. Um, this booth had some of that, and it also had several... Uh, like chain stitched 1950s uh, ranch shirts and uh, some motorcycle uh, club shirts, car club shirts, bowling shirts, that kind of thing. And so it was always good for at least one or two items of uh, vintage clothing. Um, I don't know if this vendor has been switched out because the stuff looks a little bit different since the last I've been here and there isn't any clothing racks. So I'll have to uh, look into that. These bread bowls are everywhere in Europe and uh, you can typically pick them up at a flea market for around 10 to $15, which if you're planning on sending a container, uh, those go pretty quick and that's at a price point that you could uh, flip a number of them pretty easily. Old cupboards is another thing over here in Europe that uh, are easy to source. Um, then once again, this, like I said, this is a U.S. Uh, antique store in central Illinois. I, I mention those European items because that's where I'm uh, based out of and currently sourcing my own antiques from. $120 for an apple basket, that's kind of surprising. This cabinet that's up on the wall uh, has a pretty cool look to it and um, <clears throat> the hinges on it are really great. Uh, it had a good feel when I opened it. it felt like it was almost new. And uh, yeah, that looks pretty spectacular. It'd be a great liquor cabinet or a place to keep uh, collectibles. The 
is just a little bit of signage there on the wall. Hundred dollars for the uh, for the sewing cabinet. This was surprising to me. This fish sign. Uh, they have that priced at three hundred dollars almost. Maybe there's something about it that I don't know that I'm not aware of. This <laughs> this is a really cool uh, stuffed animal. Eighty-nine dollars. It's all yours. I don't know if you kind of uh, notice uh, what I was talking about before, but the place looks so curated and, and it looks like it's all kind of of one mind, even though these are all separate uh, vendors. So I'm supposing that the, the shop owner, Mr. Yoder, does a lot of work with his vendors to kind of let him know what works here. This is in a, in a uh, I would say, kind of a... <laughs> Tourist spot would not be the right word, but they do have a lot of people that come through because of the Amish community that want to check it out. And uh, you can do some shopping for Amish products. And uh, they've chosen to cater to that and orient the store towards kind of primitive type things. And I think it works out pretty good. A little more of that collectible stuff here and uh, $25 for this large gas can. Now, a number of people over here in Poland have uh, asked me about uh, vintage and antique tools, and I had never really paid much attention to them. Um, I made these friends through the YouTube channel. Actually, they reached out to me and asked me about them. So there must be something interesting about those, and uh, at least for uh, people over here. And uh, since I've been learning about them through those connections that I've made on YouTube, I've begun to pay a little more attention to them. Um, those planes are pretty much Price between tw uh, 10 to $35, and uh, in just a moment here, we'll take a look at a few more tools. seems like every antique mall in the area has a section or at least a few vendors who focus specifically on antique tools. Personally, my interest is more in um, furniture, uh, industrial chic type stuff and stuff that shows a lot of craftsmanship in it and uh, stuff that was built to last. Obviously built to last. Even overbuilt. This thing's actually got a metal head on it, so it's really heavy out down on one end, and uh, it's pretty neat. That handle had a really great rubbed, worn look and feel to it. And if I recall, it was forty, yeah, forty-five dollars.
So if you are doing a uh, trip through the Midwest looking for antiques, I highly recommend uh, this area. This is uh, Arthur, Illinois, and about 30 minutes away is another city called Decatur, Illinois. And in Decatur, they have a number of, they have a kind of a small district of antique stores. And uh, between those two cities and a few others around, there are quite a number of opportunities to find little out of the way antique shops. Um, I've recently been paying a lot of attention to old cupboards and uh, pie shelves and that kind of thing because those are another thing that are so common over here uh, and, and really old. Some of them are like hand painted, the ones that come from here, old wedding closets, wedding chests, and uh, other country house furniture type pieces. They're hand painted and a lot of times they'll actually paint the year that the I'm not sure if it's the year that the uh, stuff was manufactured, but at least it was the year that the uh, the piece was painted, hand painted. So, and a lot of those can uh, be 1800s. I suspect these are a little bit newer. Somebody's uh, making these out of cast iron and finishing them. But uh, they are pretty cool. These are super substantial, heavy coat hooks, $40 per piece. But the thing weighs about uh, 10 pounds probably. Here's another one of those uh, pie chest things and looks like this is $500. Uh, it has a pretty awesome look to it, but it is quite a bit of value to hold for a, an, an old cabinet like that. So that's something I'm going to be on the lookout for. Old wheel. And uh, Mr. Yoda, when I spoke to him, said that uh, I should always be on the lookout for those three-legged milking stools. There was one there on the floor. Um, and that's another thing that uh, because uh, Poland is such an agrarian country and it has a lot of farms and stuff that's something I'll have a lot of access to and I'll be looking out for in the future when I'm filling my container and about this time uh, there were a few uh, young people who were kind of looking at me wondering what I was doing with this camera here so uh, I decided to uh, go ahead and wrap it up for the moment so thank you for uh, checking out my video and I uh, hope to see you again soon.